Okay, now that we know how to move around, how to move things around, we can start modeling the head. But before that, we need to understand a little bit about what's the difference of edit mode and object mode. So, in object mode, the one that we are at the moment, we are able to move objects around. We are able to select objects, we move objects, we scale them. But we are not able to do some transforms in parts of the model. So that's, that's not possible in object mode. And also all the transformations that we do, they are going to be relative to this little orange dot in most of the cases in the center of the mesh. This is called the origin. So we can change the origin to another part of the mesh. But for now, we are not going to do that. So if we want to change parts of the, of the mesh, if we want to make some transforms in a single part of the mesh, we need to go to the edit mode. So we are going to click here and go to edit mode. So this way we are able to select a single part of the model and move it around. But that's not the only way that we can do it. We can press here again, go back to object mode. And the way that we are most likely going to do a lot is hold tab and then hover with your mouse to the right. And then you're gonna have here edit mode. Release tab, and then we are going to be in edit mode. If we want to go back to object mode, we press tab again. So hold it, hover to the left, and release. This way we go back to object mode. Alright, so now I'm going to delete all the objects. I'm going to keep just the cube. So select the first one. Shift select the last one. Press X and then they are deleted all right now i'm going to get this one back to the origin so i'm going to press out g out r out s just in case if i made any transformations on it now it is back to original okay so this one is going to be basically what we are going to use to start modeling our robot. But to do that, we need to go to edit mode. And another thing is, if we want to have a, a better idea of the shape of our model, we would like to see in a way that's clearer, it's a little bit more clean, and doesn't have any kind of distortions in view, which is the case that we are at the moment. Since we are in perspective, so we are using the perspective projection. Things that are further away from the camera look smaller. So it makes this kind of distortion on the model. If we want to, to model it in a way that's easier for us to compare two parts of the same object, we would need to change it to another projection mode, which is the orthographic. To do that, we are going to press number 5 on the numpad. So pressing number 5, we can toggle perspective and orthographic view. As you can see, if we are in perspective, the cube looks a little bit more distorted. If we press 5 again, we see that it's a little bit more even, let's say. And another way that we can use to toggle between perspec perspective and orthographic views is by clicking right here. So we click it, click again, and we go to perspective and orthographic view. All right. So to model things, we are going to use the orthographic view. So I'm going to press the numpad 5. And another thing that we are going to use here a lot is snapping the camera to the view, to the closest view. To do that, I'm going to rotate, so 
while you're rotating the camera, I press Alt. And then it snaps to the, the current, to the closest view, let's say. So we see here, front orthographic view. So if I rotate it like this and press Alt, it's going to snap to the top orthographic view. So rotating again, snap. Now to the right orthographic view. We can do the same using the, uh, the numpad numbers. So for example, if I want to see the, the, right, the right side of the model, I can press number 3 on the numpad. If I want to see the front of an object, I can press number 1. And if I want to see the top, I can press number 7. This way we we can see right, front, and top. So we still need to see the, the opposites of these. And to do that, we are going to press the same buttons, but this time while holding control. So to see the left, we control three. To see the back, control one. And to see the bottom, control seven. Okay. But I said that we don't need to use those that much because there, there is another way to do that. And to do it is actually pressing the tilde button. It's the one that's to the left, to the number one. So press that button and then you're going to have the spy menu. So going up, we have the top view. Going down, we have the bottom view going right we have the right view and left we have the left view that's basically it but one that i'm going to use a lot here is rotating and holding alt then it's going to snap to the closest view all right another thing that we are going to need here is to select elements so at the moment I can select, for example, here I can select this point. I can select this other point and things like that. But I want to select, for example, this line. To do that, I can press 2 on the, on the keyboard. And then I change it here to uh, add selection mode. So select, select. I can select now an edge. And if I want to select a face, I press number 3 here and then i can select a complete face another way to change it is right here so i can click it and then it's going to change if i want to use two different modes so i want to uh, select both uh, vertex and uh, edges i can press shift 2 for example because i already had the one pressed and I'm able now to select both the edges and points at the same time. The same thing I can do it uh, here. So for example, I clicked on the edges. And so shift and click on. Now shift, click on edges. And then I'm able to select both just like we had before. All right. But it's still, and there is a, a little... I'm not going to say a problem. We, we have to, let's say that we have to select multiple um, vertices in this view. And I'm going to do a box select. And so I'm going to grab from here from to here. I want to select every single ver vertex, every single vertex in here. But it doesn't happen. You see here that there's still one that was not selected and that's basically because we are in solid view mode so in solid view mode we are only going to be able to select the things they are in view so if we want to select things they are uh, through which they are hidden by the camera let's say we will need to change it to another way to see it and one of the ways is pressing shift z so when i press shift z 
or this button here as well we see through the model and it becomes literally a wireframe so we toggle the wireframe of the model so in this way i'm able to select all of it and so i can select all the the vertices even though this one is hidden behind the behind the object so shift z is one way to toggle it and so shift z again and we go back to the previous mode that we were um another way that we can change is clicking here and so we click it we go to uh wireframe mode again so clicking here we go back to solid view so it's solid view and then and there is another one that is pressing z so when you hold z you have this pie menu that we can go to wireframe here for example and it changes again so hold z go to the right and we go back to solid view and that's basically how we are going to select some things that are behind the model well now that we know how to move around in edit mode as well we can start our new model and so we're going to to start a new file and to do that we're going to press ctrl n and we are going to select this one general so select it we are not going to save this one so don't save and here we have a brand new blend so at the moment we do not need uh, a camera we do not need a light so i'm going to select them both and delete all right now selecting here our uh cube i'm going to press f2 to change the name and i'm going to name this one the head shape this is going to be our head basically and here in the outliner we see some collections that we can use to organize our scene and that's exactly what we are going to do so this collection here i double click it and so we can either press f2 to rename or double click here to rename i'm going to change the name of this collection here to head objects why because we are going to have multiple objects to represent the head this head we are going to have uh the actual head so the actual head shape we are going to have the the cameras and they are going to be the eyes and we also are going to have an antenna and that's going to be on top of the head so this one we are going to start with the head shape okay so first of all we need to go to edit mode and i want this head to be right here on the floor i want it to be sitting on the floor and to do it i will need to move it up by one meter how do i know this basically because let me change here to uh orthographic view basically because uh, the origin is in the middle so it's in the exact center of this cube and since i know that this cube is two meters so it's two meters by two meters by two meters how do i do how do i know that i go to object mode i press n and then i see here in dimensions i have a cube of two by two by two right so i'm going to press tab again enter edit mode so since i know that it's two meters and i want it to move this part here to the floor i know that i have to move it up by one meter and to do to do that we can press g z to constrain it on the z-axis and then i can simply press the value that i wanted to move which is one okay so now i click to apply and then we have our head shape in the correct position and now i want to do another thing which is making this part of the head so the bottom of the head be smaller than the top of the head 
And to do that, we know that selecting like this, we are not going to select the vertices that are behind. So we are going to need to press Shift Z to see through it. And then we can select it, selecting with the, the box select. And then I want to scale it down because just like I said, I want it to be smaller than the top here. So I'm going to press S and scale it down to 0 0.5. So this scale works basically like a multiplier. If you multiply it by 2, it's going to grow by 2. If you multiply it by 0 0.5, it means that you are having the the size of that thing okay so 0 0.5 uh, that is so i'm going to press to confirm and then we already have the shape of the head that's basically it so i'm going to press shift z again and then we go back to object mode all right now in object mode here again i rotate hold out and then i snap to the view Okay, so we are on the front orthographic view. That's nice. So now we are going to create the eyes of this model. And to create the eyes of this model, we are going to use a cylinder. So I'm going to press Shift A in object mode. Don't forget about that. And we are going to look for cylinder here. So mesh cylinder and click it. And I am going to change here. So we see this little panel, we open it, and this one is the last operator. So here we can make some modifications on the last action that we did. And in this one, I want this eye to be 16 vertices only. And I also want to make the radius be half, so 0.5. And the depth, I also want it to be 0 0.5. Okay, so this way we can already see that it's quite big. So, yeah, not very good. But still, let's change the name of this guy here. It's at the, uh, at the moment, it's called Cylinder. I'm going to double click it. And this is going to be the eyes. So now that we have it selected so select it i'm going to edit mode again and i'm going to press shift z to see through it all right i wanted to have two eyes so at the moment this here is fairly big it, it's not going to to hold two eyes of this size so we are going to need to make it smaller I'm going to press S. I'm going to scale it down to something like uh, 0 0.4. No, 0 0.3. Okay, so 0 0.3. And also, I want it to be around a here on the head. So I'm going to move it with G. So pressing G. Move it to where I want it. You can place it wherever you want. This is your robot. So don't be afraid to make any modifications. And I'm also going to rotate it. So uh, since I want the eye to be looking that way, I'm going to press here. And so in the front again, or X90. And then we have an eye that's looking to us. And when we rotate the camera, we see that it's still in the middle of the robot. So I'm going to move it to here. So let's press g and y because we we can see here the the y-axis is in this direction so g y and move it out so i want it to be around here so i don't i don't want this part of the of the eye to be going outside of the head nor this part to be going inside of the head so we have to be careful with that. And all right. So this is basically how the, the eye is. I think I'm going to scale it up just a little bit. So uh, yeah, something like this should be good. All right. 
now one thing that we need to do is i don't want to have to change or to remake this eye and place it to the other side then we have an option to do that we can do something that makes it fairly easy to uh, mirror things and that's the keyword mirror we are going to add a mirror modifier so we are going to this wrench here so this blue wrench going to click it add modifier and then i'm going to look for mirror so when i click it we see that uh now we have a eye to the other side of the head as well if by any chance you don't have that you can click on this eye drop and then click on the head shape and it's going to use the head shape as the pivot point of your mirror and this way you're most likely going to have the same uh result that we have here all right but let's let's it's, uh, let's continue here because uh, the eye is not only this so i'm going to press shift z here really quickly because i want it to be like a frame and then uh like i want to be two lenses and so one lens there and then one here and to do that i will need to make a little change in this face right here so i pressed three to go to face select mode or you can click here and then i selected this face right here so with this face selected i'm going to press i so i to inset when i press it and move the the mouse around we can see that it creates a set of faces and then it shrinks and grows like this according to your mouse position so this here is basically going to be the the thickness of our frame and also the the size of the, uh of the lens so i'm going to click here to accept and that's basically a good i'd say that's a good thickness for the frame of the of the camera let's say but still if we look at the the other model the the mirrored version of it we still have it pretty flat so it doesn't show any difference and that's because there is or there isn't any difference we still need to make it go inside a little bit and to do that we are going to press e for extrude and then slide the mouse in like this so this way now we have something that we can use as our lens all right but still we have a little bit of a problem which is this face here has just too many vertices so if i press one we see that it has one two three if we count this is going to be 16 because when we created the cylinder it was 16 vertices and that's exactly what we have here so 16 vertices for a single face usually we want the faces to be at a maximum of four vertices and a minimum of three because less than three is not possible and with a four we have a quad with three we have a trace basically and those are the the usual the usual polygons that we use when modeling so to keep that in mind and also to make this here uh, be um, kind of standard let's say we are going to select this face here so press three or select it from here select the face that's inside right here and then i'm going to press i to inset again and i'm going to click anywhere so we just needed this here to to create this set of faces because now we can simply press the letter m at our keyboard and choose this option here at center when we click it nice now we only have triangles uh, composing this set of faces but still now we fixed this part of of the of the camera but we still have this 
part of the camera. So shift Z again to go uh, through wireframe mode. And then we are need we are going to need to select this face here. To make things a little bit easier to select, let's go to local view. So the local view to enter the local view, we are going to press the slash. So the slash button. So this one. Pressing the slash button, we are going to enter a local view. We can also toggle a local view by going to view. And then uh, if I am not mistaken, let's see view. Local view right here. So local view, toggle local view. That's it. We click it and we go out of local view. But using slash, you go in local view. Nice. So now it's easier for us to just select this face here. And then we can delete this face because it's hidden inside the model. So people are not going to be seeing it anyway. So I'm going to press X and then choose faces. And then it's going to delete only the faces. All right. Now that we've made the changes that we need to in the eye, in this case, in, in local view, we press the slash again to go out of local view and then we are going to need to do a just another thing here just to make this a little bit uh better a little bit more rounded because at the mo at the moment it's too pointy we are going to add some bevel to these frames so to the the camera frame and to do it we are going to press two or we can select it from here and here we see that it completes a loop so these lines they complete a loop we are going to select all these loop here we could select one of the of the lines and then shift select another one shift select another one shift select another one that's possible we can do that but it's too slow what if we had let's say uh, 300 lines here, you know, 300 edges, we would have to select one by one, so that wouldn't be uh, very smart. So there is a shortcut in Blender to do that. And it is by pressing and holding out, and then click. So when you press hold out, it's going to select all the, the edges, or vertices, or faces that are connected in the loop or a semi semi loop let's say but since we have a loop here it's selected all the loop if you don't uh if you can't use alt because you're emulating the three mouse button you have to double click so when you double click you're going to select the loop so here and since we are not emulating it we are going to press alt click and i also want to select this inner loop right here so i'm going to press alt and shift because i want to keep the the selection that i had before and click this way we have these two rings selected now to add a a little bit of roundness to these borders we are going to add a bevel so i'm going to press ctrl b for bevel and then drag the mouse out whoops let me see drag the mouse out just a little bit and then i can increase or decrease the amount of cuts that i add to this bevel by rotating the mouse wheel so i can make it more uh rounded or i can also use the the numpad plus and minus to to go up and down with the number of cuts i want to just have one uh, extra cut so i rotate it just once and then i'm clicking right here so if you want to see how your bevel is if you want to make some changes we have this last operation thing that we can make the number of segments go up so like this or keep it at the way it was before here we have a bunch of options that we are not going through here but uh 
you can change lots of things here and it might be what you want so i'm going to collapse this here and this way we already have the eyes modeled yeah i'd say that's that's basically it so now i'm going to press alt a to deselect everything and then i am going back to object mode so dab over to the to the left and release tab now i want to create a the antenna and to do that i'm also going to use a cylinder so shift a mesh cylinder and then we already have a cylinder the same way that we had before when we created the eyes now i'm going to press f2 and then change the name of this to antenna like this and then i am going to edit mode so hold out over to the, to the right release and that's it shift z again to see through i still think that this is pretty big so i'm going to make it smaller so something like this should do and then i'm going to bring it up to the top of the head so g z and bring it up i want something that's sticking in in the head so let's bring it down just a little bit like this should be completely fine all right so i'm going to press shift z again just so we see it in solid in solid view and now i am going to press three select this top of the uh, of the cylinder because from here we are going to extrude the actual antenna so this in here is the base of the antenna and we are going to extrude the uh the cable i, I guess and that's how it's called i don't know so for that we are going to press i again to inset so i'm going to get it fairly small so something like this should be good and then i am going to extrude it up so let me see it in the front view so again rotate the camera hold alt and then it snaps and i'm going to press e and bring it up to the size that i want my antenna to be and i want it to be around here i should be good okay uh but this antenna is not very uh not very friendly i'd say it's just a, a stick like this i would like it to to do like a zigzag and somewhere around here and it to to bend some uh, a little bit but if i try to do it let me press one here and then shift z if i try to select vertices here in in the way in the the middle of this uh cable i can't basically because there isn't any so if there isn't any vertices here then i cannot transform it here i can because it's uh it's the top and so i can move it like this but since in the middle of it i don't have any i will not i uh, will need to add so to do that i'm going to press ctrl r and then we are going to see this yellow line this is basically a simulation of where the the vertices or the edges are going to be placed at so if i click on it i can drag it up or down like this and then when i choose where i want it to be i can click again to to accept it but i'm going to press ctrl z because we can press ctrl r and rotate the the mouse wheel so we can increase the number of cuts so let's see i want it to have this this amount of cuts in here so it's one two three four cuts then i'm going to press the, the left mouse and i don't want it to be anywhere different from where it was before so i'm going to press the right mouse button so it's going back to the to the middle all right 
it's still I have now uh, ways to select this here uh, so I can move it like this and all that yeah that's good so I can move it a little bit I want to move this one here and this one here so now I have a uh, kind of like of an S shape in here but I still want to have a little bit of a zigzag in here so I'm going to add a little bit more geometry so control R to uh, cut in this here so to create some loops and I'm going to rotate it uh, uh, rotate the mouse wheel and click right click and keep it in the same place so now I'm able to select this here and bring it to here this one I can bring it here and this one I can bring it here so I have this kind of shape to the antenna all right but now I still want something else to be on top of this antenna every time that we see some kind of antenna like this they always have this a tip and that is like a I don't know a circle a sphere or something like that and I'd like to add just like it so I'd like to add here a sphere so for me to add a sphere exactly here I have a um a kind of a trick which is we can select all the vertices here on the top and then we can press shift s and here we can go to this part here so cursor to select it so click it and then we have the 3d cursor where the middle of all those points are so it calculates where the middle should be and then it places the 3d cursor right there this way since we know that when we add objects and the objects they go to where the 3d cursor is i can press shift a i don't even need to go to object mode I can press shift a here and then choose what i want so i want a uv sphere i'm going to select this uv sphere and also going here to the uh last operation here we have just too many vertices here we don't need this many because this is not something that should be so detailed so i'm going to bring it down to half half of it so segments it's 32 i'm going to bring it to 16 and rings i'm going to bring it to 8 so, so basically segments they are going to be like the rows of this uv or of this sphere so for example this here is one segment two three like this and rings they are going to be the vertical the vertical actually the horizontal lines like this so these are the rings all right but still the this sphere that we added it's just too big so we can change the size of it from here or we can simply come here and press s to scale it down and i'm going to keep it like this it should be good yep and that's it so basically this way we already have the head completely modeled so i'm going to press shift z just to go back to a uh, solid view and then i'm going to object mode so dab object mode and then click outside of it and we already have our head shape one thing that's very important and that we got all the way to here is to save our work we don't want to lose it so i'm going to press ctrl s to save and look for where i want to save it in my case it's going to be somewhere around in the d drive so this is here boy bot is the name of our boy so i'm going to add here boy bot and i'm going to add underline 01 because we are going to make multiple versions of it so i'm going to press enter and then save the model so now we finished the head and we are going to the arms modeling next so i will see you in the next one